on three is covering Oregon's new offense with Dylan Gabriel, Evan, Evan Stewart. Don't know much about Evan Stewart, but I know a little bit of something about that, 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 that Dylan Gabriel. The Oregon offense averaged over 41 points a game in 2023. Some changes in that offense now. Bo Nix no longer be your quarterback. Entering Dylan. Hey, I'm going to say this. If you've been following my channel, especially if you've been following me on Twitter, uh, then you will know that I'm not the biggest fan of Bo Nixon, but I am a huge fan of that coaching staff um, with or at, at Oregon. I don't think they asked their quarterbacks to do too much. I didn't think uh, Bo Nix was like anything spectacular. I mean, how hard is it to throw a dot, a swing pass, a screen here or there? You know, it, it ain't too, they ain't asking you to do too much. So. And Dylan Gabriel may be a little bit better of an athlete, so he probably can really bring that RPO kind of game to life in Oregon. Uh, I think I think it's a good fit. Smaller quarterback, a little bit probably more mobile, even though Bo Nix can run. I think Dylan Gabriel is probably a little bit more athletic, though. Let's 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 see what on three got to say. Is it on three or is it one? I don't know. I never knew what it was. Dylan Gabriel lose Troy Franklin to the league, bring in Evan Stewart. I'm going to tell you why I don't think Oregon has any reason to expect a letdown offensively in 2024. We'll talk about it right now, but Oregon Duck fans, make sure you're locked in right here, baby. We talk ball every single day. We do breakdowns like this. We do analysis. We do reaction to breaking news. We talk recruiting. We talk portal. Everything that you love about college football, Oregon or otherwise, we talk it on this show. So make sure you're locked in. If you are not subscribed, check that subscribe button. Uh, if you think you're subscribed, double check for us. We just appreciate it. We got like 70% of y'all that are watching, but not yet subscribed. So appreciate y'all being dialed in. Is hey, only, shit, I think only like, I think like 98% of the people that's following or that watches my content is not subscribed. I wish I can get to the, the on three level or one. Well, I don't know. Y'all tell me, is it on three or is it one? I don't know. But I wish I can get to the 70%. Uh, I wish I could get that 98 down to 70%. So I got a lot of work to put in, man. Let's go. This is the bottom line here. So thank you in advance for that. All right, let's get to it, baby. Like I said, Oregon offense not taking a step back. And let's start with how they run the offense, okay? What Oregon will do, and we saw this a lot last year with Bo Nix, is they will try and stretch your defense and try and poke holes in it, or really punch holes in it, rather, once they get you spread out and run inside line to sideline. What made them so effective at this was Bo Nix was super efficient with the football. 70% of the time he was completing his passes. That's ridiculous. That's <clears throat> but that's not that's not fair. You're not telling the whole story. He was efficient in that offense, but like I said, man, he how hard is it to complete a dot, a hitch, a swing, a slant? historic even and so what they would do was they would go up tempo get the ball out on the perimeter to a tez johnson or a troy franklin and get the the motions going back and forth as well with some jet sweeps like all that they did at least on the early part of a game typically was to attack your defense on the perimeter get your running sideline to sideline okay so when that happened then you would get a run up the other way or it would be interior so once you're kind of off balance then they would start to throw those haymakers at you and really make you pay. I mean, that's a overcomplicated version of the the Oregon offense in my limited observation of their offense. You know, they they really just play the numbers game. I'm gonna put some trips out here, or you only you got two a corner and a safety out there. I got numbers. I'm gonna throw the dot. Oh, I'm gonna you know I got doubles over here. You got a corner. You got a safety out the ball. I'm gonna throw the swing to the right. You know, they, they really just play the numbers. Or oh, you got everybody fanned outside, only four people inside the box, I'm going to run it. So, I mean, it's a really simple game they run, but they run it so well. They, I love that. I love their offensive scheme. I love it. And they got they got that big boy. What's his name? Josh Connerly? What that boy? Hey, Josh, hey, listen, man. Josh Connerly is going to be a top 10 pick. You heard it here first. Next year, Josh Connerly will be a top 10 pick. So you say, J.D., Bo Nix no longer in the system. Are we still going to be able to run the offense how we ran it? Yep, you're going to actually run it better with Dylan Gabriel. I think Dylan Gabriel is a better fit athletically. And I don't like. I, don't, I just think he's a I, – I like Dylan Gabriel. I ain't going to say he's better than Bo Nix because Bo Nix was 
Heisman candidate, but a lot of Bo Nick's success came from that offense. I really believe that. You can't tell me otherwise. Will Stein, he's a he's an architect offensively, but you know his key piece, his quarterback, isn't there anymore. To that, I would answer 1,000%. I believe Oregon will not lose a step, in large part because of who's running the show now for you at quarterback, but a left-handed Bo Nix, in my opinion, and Dylan Gabriel. Everything that Bo Nix did well, I think Dylan Gabriel can do well in the exact same sense. I'm not saying he's going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate. I'm not saying he's going to throw and complete around 80% of his passes, but I do think what is required to do well in this offense, efficiency, he has in spades. Ooh, see? Hey, man, look, me and, uh, what's the man's name? Pakel. Hey, we speaking the same language right now. See, I ain't even, hey, we on the same page. Like, hey, man, I don't think Bo Nix was asked to do much in that offense. And I don't think Dylan Gabriel's going to be asked to do much within that offense. But I do think Dylan Gabriel's legs need to be a little bit more respected. Um, I you know it's hard to compete with a 70% completion percentage from Bo Nix. Uh, if you can equal that, great, great. But um, I think I think Oregon is in good hands, unfortunately, because y'all not like I'm a Georgia fan. You know I rock with Coach Prime, Coach Prime. I, I'm rocking with Prime. Win, lose, or draw, I'm rocking with Prime. It is what it is. Uh, but hey, man, I like Oregon. I like what what Dan is doing up there. I like the team he's put together. I like the, I like the recruits he's grabbed in the 2024 class. Like I just like. I like a lot. Of, I like everything they're doing at Oregon. Will they get over the hump this year? I don't know. I'm for sure going to watch. Last season, Dylan Gabriel completed 69% of his passes. You say, J.D., that's like almost 10% less than what Bo Nix was doing. Well, before Bo Nix came to Oregon, his highest completion percentage at Auburn was 61%. So what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say here is the system, people say, oh, system quarterback Bo Nix, system quarterback that. I don't think that's a correct way to view this, but I do think the system complements the quarterback. Now, come on, bro. You come on, bro. You can't you can't say he's not a system quarterback and then say, well, the system complements the quarterback. You talking in circles, bro. Just say Bo Nix benefited greatly from being that Oregon system. There's nothing wrong with that. For the longest, Tom Brady was a system quarterback. The Tom Brady we know today was not the Tom Brady we saw his first 10 years. He just wasn't. So the Tom Brady we see today. The last 10 years of his career. Now, that guy, that Tom Brady, is not a system quarterback. Those first 10 years, though, system quarterback. And there's nothing wrong with that. A big part of why Bo Nix was successful in this offense and a reason why Dylan Gabriel will be successful, on top of his accuracy, on top of his efficiency, he's experienced. Dylan Gabriel going into his sixth year playing college football. What that tells me is he is not going to panic in pretty much any situation. He's seen a lot. He's played a lot of ball. He's not going to get in situations and feel flustered and feel overwhelmed. He's going to be the cool, calm, steady hand. And for Oregon, as much as you want to talk about their system being quarterback friendly, the way that I view Oregon's offense is like a rocket ship when you're playing quarterback. There's a lot of bells and whistles. There's a lot of things you have to be on your P's and Q's for because it happens very quickly. Oregon had one of the lowest sack rates in the country last year, in large part because Bo Nix got the ball out of his hand quickly. Dylan Gabriel will be asked to do the exact same thing. And so he's going to have to be, you know, know where his hot route is. He's going to have to know how to, you know, find his, his early access throw. He's got to know one, two, and three like the back of his hand. And I think within this offense and given D Dylan Gabriel's track record, he'll be able to do that effectively. That's going to be really, really crucial to being successful. Going back to that. Hey, Dylan Gabriel is going to be a better quarterback for Oregon than Bo Nix was. I'm saying, I'm standing on I'm not going to. I'm not going to play the field. I'm not going to hedge my bet. I'm telling you right now, Dylan Gabriel will be a better quarterback under this system than Bo Nix. I'm standing on that, and I'm standing on that. That rocket ship metaphor. If he knows where, how, where all the buttons are and he knows which ones to press, this thing's going to run itself. Now, a big reason why it will run itself in addition to Dylan Gabriel is the weapons that you have within this offense. Like you can be efficient and complete the football, but it only matters as much as the guys who catch the football for you are able to do with it. Enter in Tez Johnson, enter in Evan Stewart, the transfer from Texas A&M. Tez Johnson coming off for a, a thousand yard season. Evan Stewart averaging 13 yards reception. Tez Johnson also averaging 13 yards reception. The bottom line here is when you get the football to your playmakers on time, on the money, in space, they're going to be able to make something happen with it. 
I think they're going to be a tremendous one-two punch, and that's going to continue to allow the offense to be explosive. I think, again, to that tune of 40 points a game. Now you say, Jody, they lose Bucky Irving. That's huge. Do not get it twisted. You don't just go and replace Bucky Irving. However, you do have Jordan James who averaged seven yards a carry last year. I think he's primed to have another great season. And it will be different, okay? I understand the Big Ten has a different level of defense played more often than not week in and week out within that conference than the Pac-12 did. I'm not saying anything about the Pac-12, but I am saying teams like Ohio State, I expect to really bring the juice defensively. And I think overall, the the level of play defensively, personnel-wise, will offer some things that the Pac-12 didn't. But with that being said, what you have at quarterback, what you have at playmakers like Evan Stewart and Tez Johnson, the way they run this system under Will Stein, it's so efficient to where if you just do your job and you're cued into what you're supposed to do offensively, know your assignment, this offense has answers built into it. And so for Dylan Gabriel, being able to be a mobile quarterback as well adds a whole other answer to what defenses will not be able to do, keying on Jordan James or keying on Tez Johnson or or anything like that. Like the second level will have a lot of responsibilities from Dylan Gabriel throwing the football out to the flat to Jordan James to him running the football with Dylan Gabriel. There's a lot of things now you have to focus on as a defense that can put stress on you and cause for big plays if you do what you're supposed to do offensively for Oregon. So all that's to say now, Yes, the conference changes. Yes, the quarterback changes. Yes, some key faces change. But with how this thing is run under Will Stein, I think it's going to stay efficient with Dylan Gabriel. I think he got the right pilot for the rocket ship. And I think Oregon will once again be a force offensively in 2024. Last thing I'll say here, Will Stein, as good as he is, the success that he's having, I don't know when, but I do believe at some point in time he will be a head coach in college football. That's how good he is. That's how good an OC Oregon has right now in-house. And this year is going to be a big year, I believe, again, offensively by nature of how they've attacked the portal and who they have running the show for them. So let me know how you feel about Oregon offensively in 2024. Let me know also what other breakdowns you want to see on this very channel. This is a fun part of the year. We just get to kind of talk ball, kind of break down some, some X's and O's through a, you know, a format like this where we just kind of talk through some staples of different offenses and what's effective. Or- All right, so like I said before, man, I like what Dylan Gabriel did at Oklahoma. I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't pump fake on that. Pump fake on that. I really like what Dylan Gabriel was able to do at Oklahoma. And I think in this Oregon offense where it's like so easy to be a quarterback, just follow your read, man. Count your numbers, boom. Count your numbers, boom. One, two, three, give it. Boom. You know, then you can, once you suck those defenders up, then you can hit them over the top, hit them seams, cover three, hit those uh, hole shots and cover two. Hit that deep, hit that, hit that deep middle versus that linebacker and cover two, man. Whatever. But I like Dylan Gabriel. I like what he brings. I like the dynamics he brings to the offense. And yes, I do think that. Uh, Dylan Gabriel is going to be a upgrade from Bo Nix because I wasn't a fan of Bo Nix at Auburn, whatever else he came from. And he he was good at in Oregon. I give him that, but I think that's primarily due to the system. But y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Your favorite coach.